Hey gang, Aaron Fisher here with another episode of the Card Magic Minute. This is my chance to share with you some of the profound lessons my students are learning when we work together every week during the course of my online personal training program. One of the most important things you can do during the first major ascent uh, you make up the mountain of card magic is to develop a seriously strong foundation for everything that's going to come. Now everyone has heard that before and everyone knows what that means. Oh, I'm supposed to learn the basics and learn correctly how to do them. But it really does mean more than that. And today I'd like to give you an example of exactly what I'm talking about. Um, one of the first things that I teach my students after we've learned how to hold a deck of cards and shuffle a deck of cards is how to get a break under the top card. Super important thing to do and, uh, and so many of us fall into all kinds of traps, pinky counts, two-handed breaks, all kinds of things which seem like they make that process easier and what they actually do is make it harder to to fool the audience than the method written by Robert Houdin many, many years ago, which was this old idea of misdirecting with this hand and as you do that, out of frame, in this case the frame is very easy to see, you uh, relax and you push off the top card or cards and you uh, get a break below them. Seems very simple. It's a very old method. And, and literally, this was the method Larry Jennings shared with me in the late 90s when I was trying to learn the pinky count. And Larry settled me down and taught me I didn't have to do that. He showed me this method of Robert Houdin's, which is completely great. And it's much the same method that I teach my students to this day. Now, now check this out. When I show the students how to do it, I explain to them very, very clearly, <clears throat> pardon me, that they have to cock their thumb back all the way all the way back. Now you'll see if you're doing this with me right now, that's quite a bit further back than you think you need to cock it. It's so far back that the edge of the thumb is right there on the white border of the card. And the idea is from there that you <clears throat> push the card off and you'll see how far you get that card off and how wonderful that really is. And the students, they go, ow, that really hurts. Okay, but I understand, teach. And then they go home and then they work on it. And then in our next lesson or two, when I actually see what they've done, this is what those of them that are doing the actual thing up to speed, those of whom have ramped up and are starting to get the break and really do it just the way we've talked, misdirecting with one card in one hand, getting the break with the other, they're almost always doing this grip instead. They start with the thumb right here and they just push it off and they pull it back. And because what they notice when they go home and they start to, to practice is that you don't really need all of the different pieces of information that I shared in order to get it done. You don't really need to, here's another one, bevel the cards and relax to, to let these cards extend downward and then cock this thumb all the way back and that pushes off the card and they can go. They realize that just laying the thumb, lying the thumb naturally across the cards, they can extend the thumb and get that break. Well, the problem is they are learning how to get a break under one card correctly, but they are making it more difficult when they decide that it's time to get two or three. Now, the two or three, you're going to want to be able to do. Several months from now, assuming that you're learning this right now, several months from now, you're going to really know how to get a break under one. You're going to realize at that point, it's no big deal to extend the action and push off two. And in fact, that's the reason I teach them to cock this thumb way far back, further back than you would ever have to put that thumb in order to get a break under one card. I mean, look how far you can push that off. So, of course, getting a break under two is great. Furthermore, by cocking way far back, I'm trying to teach the students to be performers because at the beginning, it all just seems like card stuff. But in reality, if you start here and push a card off, it's going to be quite some time before you learn how to do that comfortably without looking. The purpose of pushing it way the far off is you've got so much extra time and space for your left fingers to push up, peel off an extra card if you got one, make sure it doesn't come along, and you can really, with the audience, relaxing, get a break under as many cards as you'd like without any trouble, without anyone noticing anything. So this is what I mean when I say to build a foundation. It doesn't just mean doing the stuff correctly or learning the right way to learn moves. It means you have to plot your assault on a given uh, realm, if you were, uh, if it, as it were, of, of technique in such a way that you're learning the first skills so that you can succeed, but preparing the, the, the seed of the subsequent skills within that basic technique. Because the students of mine that just do it this way, 
and choose not to follow this direction. Of course, they have me to help them so that that misconception never stays around too long. They learn that if they're going to learn now in a few weeks to go, or months, I should say, to get it under two cards, they're going to have to relearn. All of a sudden, they're going to be going back and cocking that thumb back in the same way that we first learned to do it, except now they're doubling their practice time. So my goal in studying uh, with these students and, and, and conceivably you is to help you understand those foundational elements as you're going so you always know exactly what you're working on right now and it's always a, a small step from where you are so it's always very very comfortable very very digestible but you understand as you're doing it what later lessons you're building your preparation for even at the very very beginning and whether you're studying with me or you're studying on your own it really would behoove you to give these things thought and plan on preparing for a progression that lasts more than just a couple months. Plan on a progression that lasts a couple years so that you can build the house that you want to grow into just like you would do in, in your life normally. So that's today's episode of the Card Magic Minute, and I really do hope you enjoyed it. If the things I'm talking about make sense to you, you are likely a very good candidate to study with me online. So don't be intimidated. Send me an email now or go to aaronfishermagic.com slash coaching.htm and fill out a free student profile that'll tell me more about you and your magic. If you're a beginner, I will help you acquire your own foundation in line with your own talents and goals and objectives. Uh, and we'll do it step by step. If you are not a beginner, if you've been doing this for a while and you're stalled out, I can create a safe space for you to progress, to progress, and also to find out where in your progression the knots formed that are currently holding you up. I can help you undo those knots and help you finally move past the wall and accomplish the goals that you've been setting for yourself. So you can email me. I'm Aaron at AaronFisherMagic.com. You can get me on Facebook at Facebook.com slash Aaron Fisher and just send me an email through that system and I will add you as a friend. Or you can follow me on Twitter at Aaron Fisher Card. Thanks so much for watching and I do hope to hear from you soon.